So, in my first video in this series, all I did was read an article from 2008 that was published in the New York Times, and it clearly showed the pay-to-play nature of the Clinton Foundation and then Frank Justra mining interests being involved in a foreign country um, of Kazakhstan and the president of Kazakhstan who's corrupt being able to use Bill Clinton's good word in public uh, discourse as a currency so that he could gain a, access to a uh, human rights council. And so it showed the uh, pay-to-play nature of the Clinton Foundation, its operations, and this was in 2008, leading up to 2008. Um, that's when the article was published in the New York Times. And so I want to show you that those things have been published, and it's just that they haven't been prosecuted or haven't been paid any attention to. It's a global uh, uh, situation that we're dealing with. It's hard to prosecute these kinds of things, I believe. And another thing I want to show is how the Clintons have uh, put certain people, kept certain people in place. The ones, the exact very people that would be able to prosecute them are high-powered people that are most likely on the Clintons' side of things, if you were to take sides. I would hope that America is moving to a more populist, uh, post-partisan most of us can see that it's uh, two wings of the same bird, that both parties are corrupt to the same extent, and uh, with what happened in the political realm last year, where essentially both political parties, as we knew them previous, have been wiped off the face of the map. I mean, the Democrats, Bernie Kratz, divided and then destroyed. And th it's a... You know, it, it, it's hard for anyone to find a home in the Democrat Party right now, Democratic Party right now. The Republicans split, divided into the uh, pro Trump crowd, the never Trump GOP, and uh, the Tea Partiers should be progressive uh, populists because it meant taxed enough already, cut taxes, uh, the whole thing. And I don't even really, I understand we're in a post-partisan. I understand that the internet has powers that the mass media, press, cable news have lost. And the uh, print press have lost. Uh, we have powers, those of us on the internet who are following politics and following scandalous activities of our politicians, etc., and uh, dare dare I say it, certain conspiracy theories. Uranium One is not a, a a scam. This isn't some propaganda being pushed by Fox News. It might be right now. I mean, I do hear Hannity is talking about it. I don't really watch him. I don't have a TV. All of this going forward really needs to be backed up with good sourcing. We've got to avoid any of the uh, rumors, um, anything that's not vetted and not actually tied back in. I tend to want to go the direction that Charles Ortel has gone, where we focus on the charity itself, the Clinton Foundation that has no foundation. It was registered as a presidential library back in the 90s, and it never really got registered as anything different since then. And that's a problem. It's a problem in every state that it operates. It's a problem for the IRS. So, as, it's, as the Clinton Foundation has split up into different groups where it has a health initiative, um, it's got a... Um, it's got activities in Haiti that are uh, registered separate. It's become very difficult to track its own numbers. And the contributions that are made to the Clinton Foundation, it's been clear that Bill and Hillary Clinton use their political might in the marketplace as 
in exchange for contributions to their charitable foundation. And then there's also questions about how much of that charity that's supposed to go to Haiti or AIDS drugs actually is getting there. So it's just a big no accountability because the whole situation, the whole organization was never set up properly to be accounted on the money side. So there's four periods of time. Um, right after the Iraq war broke out is, I believe, when the Hillary for Senate in New York campaign would have been. And then she was a senator in New York in uh, the years after that. And then there was the um, Hillary for President, 2008. And um, running against, of course, Barack Obama. And um, it really looked like Hillary was going to be a contender right up to almost the very end. And uh, it's almost a, a Chicago machine came in and took over the DNC. And that's when Barack Obama became the uh, won the primary. <clears throat> But she became Secretary of State under Obama, right? So she still was able to pay off on some of her um, contributions that had been made to the Clinton Foundation from foreign, uh, foreign sources as a Secretary of State. And we actually saw under her reign of Secretary of State exactly what she had been paid to do. And... Um, then we go into these last few years, which was the Hillary for President campaign. And again, we're seeing the same things, and we saw a lot of bodies drop, and uh, that kind of thing might not ever be prosecuted. But if we can get to this foundation, if we can get certain people within our government whose duty it is to investigate and prosecute, and I'm not really talking about the Justice Department, necessarily. It's actually uh, the state's attorneys general who need to prosecute these and that's a hard road. It doesn't look good in that field. So for charity fraud and um, this ties in directly into anything that the Clinton Foundation has done in the last 10 years ties directly into this Uranium One deal which spans years in the first video, I talked about how a shell corporation called Eurasia was set up so that it could begin mining in Kazakhstan. And it was used as a shell corporation. It was publicly traded in Canada and then was sold into, um, I believe, either Ros Rosatomprom and um, became Uranium One, which is a Russian-held company. But back to the Clinton Foundation, the charity fraud could be pro prosecuted by the IRS. The IRS is who gives charities their um, ability, their, their um, sanction. And the IRS needs to step up and do its job in pointing out that these, ch these charities were never registered. And... Um, we're dealing with people that are very rich that have given money to these charities that would be in, pr in pretty big trouble because it's their duty to also check. And that would be like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and Frank Joostra. And it's, it's a difficult situation. Many people in Hollywood, of course. Difficult situation because once the IRS begins cracking down on the Bill Clinton Foundation, then all these people would be brought into it. The the fold of this and um, anytime there's charity um, money raising done through the US mail um, over the wires it, it that it, the mail specifically the the postmaster general can look into it as well so that in conjunction with the state's attorneys generals now in New York one of the states where the Clinton Foundation operates the Attorney General is uh, Eric Schneiderman and that's he's a Democrat and Dem probably not a uh, slim chance that he would do anything uh, to have to do against the Clintons. He's, he's been in the news for the MMA lawsuit um, where MMA wasn't legal in New York until he's, until they sued and um, legislature 
change the law. Fantasy football, also the same thing. A couple fantasy football companies sued to be legal in New York, and the law was changed. Um, in 2013, um, Eric Schneiderman sued Trump University, and the state of New York sued Trump University. And uh, Donald Trump called Eric Schneiderman a political hack. So, like I said, that slim chance that this guy would be the one that steps up to prosecute the Clinton Foundation. And then we have uh, this Postmaster General, who's also a Democratic uh, appointee, still in office from uh, the Obama years. Um, her name is Megan Brennan, and I would think it would probably be a, a slim chance that she would take on the, the powers, as much flack that she would take in the public for doing that. Um, even though this might be the Watergate of our time, as President Trump said. So, a different take on this, a different speed for this video. The way that the Clinton crime family operates is what we really need to be focusing on. And most of that information came out last year during the Podesta email leaks. Because John Podesta had a password on his email and he fell victim to a phishing scam but his password was actually password and that's why all of his emails were released and that's why we know most of this information and that's why I've been saying for a year and a half that uranium one is the big story and once uranium one comes to the forefront it'll make everything else fall into place because there's so many people within the government that had to sign off on the uranium one deal in order for our uranium United States unmined uranium to be sold to be transferred so many people have to sign off and so many organizations that something wrong happened here and that needs to be investigated in and of itself so in my third video I think I'll go over a little bit more information here um, we're gonna see some some things fall. People might be prosecuted for things other than what they're actually most guilty of, like Al Capone was prosecuted for tax evasion as opposed to all the racketeering. We might see that. And um, I hope that we do see people held accountable for the crimes that they've committed. Um, this kind of graft, the, the point of view I come from is just like Jimmy Stewart, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, where he's just appalled that people are trading this for that, and quid pro quo is the actual way that the, the actual grease of Washington. Um, I believe that when Donald Trump said drain the swamp, that a large amount of voters said yes, yes, that's that's even more important than lowering our taxes because we understand how much money is lost by the government waste, by the government graft, by uh, this company getting a special deal from the government. We understand how much of our money that we could be using for sandwiches for our children's lunch. That money, that same money, gets taken to the government and gets misused and we understand this on a base level and it's that reason that reason in itself that I think that this is important the uranium that's in that ground in the West was left there and it was protected by our grandfathers I mean these are people in the 1940s and 1950s decided we don't want to mine this stuff right now we want to wait until our nuclear uh, reactors and we have maybe have fusion we have nuclear reactors that are much more efficient in the future and safer and we'll let our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren mine this so that they can not ever have to pay a power bill in America ever again if we had that uranium the 20 percent of our uranium that is now gone maybe we may not ever get that back it may not be clawed back that's going to run Russia's uh, power facilities for 200 years. 
and it could have ran our power facilities in all of America for 200, 250 years. And that means nobody paying a power bill if we could swing it. That's how important this is. This isn't about nuclear weapons. This is about heating and cooling our homes for free forever.